The United States is now the only country in the world that is not committed to fighting climate change. Now, recently it was reported that the war-torn country of Syria just became a new signatory of the Paris Climate Agreement, which is an international effort to avoid the worst impacts and effects of climate change. Now, uh, according to The Independent, a war-torn Middle East nation made the announcement in Bonn, Germany at the COP23 UN Climate Summit. Syria is now facing the sixth year of a brutal civil war, which started with rebel groups fighting against the government. Now, the Paris Accord, which they signed, was originally signed by nearly 200 countries back in December 2015. That was during the uh, reign of President Obama. Uh, now, it was signed, of course, in an effort to curb greenhouse gas emissions and limit global warming within two degrees Celsius. Now, that is actually not a huge goal. And when we did the Paris Agreement, I was critical of it because it didn't go far enough. Now, two degrees is the minimum we can do to try to impact uh, or try to avoid the worst impacts of climate change, which is already slated to be pretty bad. We are now living in climate change. This isn't something that is still far off in the future. We are now already experiencing the effects of human-caused climate change. Now, Interestingly enough, there was another nation besides Syria uh, that didn't sign on to this, and that was Nicaragua. Now, interestingly enough, Nicaragua was a holdout nation because of the what I had just talked about, the fact that it didn't go far enough. Uh, the uh, Independent explains, it's because the Central American country felt the agreement did not go far enough in putting limits on emissions and helping poorer countries adapt to an already changed planet with solid financial commitments by wealthier nations. So here's the logic of that. Now, I know some people are like, that's oh, not fair. Why we got to pay for climate change? Why we got to pay to help these other countries? Well, because we industrialized first, right? America, uh, you know, Europe, uh, we industrialized before some of these other uh, developing nations. We industrialized using fossil fuels. We didn't know any better. We thought, oh, no, the burning coal, not a problem, right? Uh, burning oil, not a problem. It's not going to add to climate change. What's climate change? I've never heard of this situation before. I've never heard of this, this thing. So we're going to build our civilization on the backs of fossil fuels. Then 70s and 80s, we're like, hey, wait a minute. Turns out there's this thing, uh, climate change, we're warming dramatically. So this is going to be a problem in the future. So these other countries, they're like, well, wait a minute now. Now we know about climate change. Now it's a problem. We want to industrialize, but we can't do this using fossil fuels because we're going to fuck up the planet. Well, you countries who actually were able to industrialize before us and who have gotten very wealthy and very powerful because of it, ba based on your fossil fuel economy, well, we need some help industrializing because we can't do the same thing as you did. I think it's only fair. That we help out these other countries because, again, we use fossil fuels to industrialize uh, and they're unable to. But anyway, now scientists had confirmed the emissions level agreed upon by top polluters like the US, EU, China and India were not low enough to keep sea levels from rising and global warming under two degrees Celsius, let alone the recommended and more ambitious goal of one and a half degrees by 2100. However, Nicaragua agreed, Syria agreed, uh, that it was, quote, superior to having no global climate change agreement at all. So, and look, Nicaragua, by the way, they're actually doing really well when it comes to renewable energy. In fact, uh, more than half of the nation's energy now comes from geothermal, wind, solar, and wave energy. And they plan on increasing their share of renewable energy to 90% by 2020. That's 90%. That's nearly 100. Um, all of their energy needs met through renewable clean energies in three years. That is incredibly ambitious. And if they can reach an ambitious goal, why the hell can't we? Well, I know why. It's because we don't want to as a nation. And I, I show that, uh, and I say that because we have shown that by electing 
not only a political party that doesn't believe in climate change, but also a climate denier to the presidency. This is a guy who called global warming a hoax created by the Chinese in order to hurt coal jobs. In fact, his one of his main reasons for walking out of the Paris Agreement was uh, to say that, oh, yeah, our workers, uh, coal workers, American workers, dis big disadvantage. They're getting hurt. But that's actually not true. According to the Washington Post, the coal industry had employed 76,572 people in the industry that's actually down. And they continue to shed jobs uh, and, you know, not need as many people uh, because, look, not a lot of people are buying coal anymore. Coal is actually far more expensive. Wind energy and solar energy are actually becoming far, far cheaper than coal. And these utility companies are going, well, why would we buy more expensive coal for our energy when we could go and get solar energy for cheaper? That doesn't make sense. So, in fact, there's been a huge explosion in solar energy now that it has been cheaper uh, thanks to refinements in manufacturing um, as well as the technology getting better. In fact, this last year, employees in the solar industry hit over 250,000 in America. And now the solar industry is one of the top employers in the country and one of the fastest growing industries in the country. Coal is not coming back. It's dying. Because again, as I pointed out, it's more expensive. And it's also, by the way, the reason that we're not getting more coal jobs back, even though President Trump is saying, oh, we got to put more money into coal, more money into coal. Well, the process of coal mining is actually now largely automated. We don't need as many coal miners as there was before. Mountaintop removal, that's also cuts down in the number of employees and people needed to work in the coal mines. Uh, so again, that number is going to continue to shrink. We've got to bring in new opportunities for people in coal country. Because like it or not, coal is dying. It's a dead industry. And no one's going to be able to, uh, to prop it up in the face of renewable energy that continues to get cheaper and more efficient. But look, we, we know why Trump really left the, coal, uh, the, the Paris Agreement. It's because he wanted to undo everything President Obama had done. It, no, Obama, uh, what did he do? Oh, did, 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 did he go, go in the Paris Climate Agreement? Okay, we're, we're gone. We're done. It's petty, right? And also, it's the same reason that he rolled back the Clean Power Plan. Um, if left in place, the Clean Power Plan would have reduced U.S. power plant's carbon emissions by 2030 to a level 32% lower than they were in 2005. So, uh, look, even if you didn't believe in climate change, Clean Power Plan, again... I think there was a lot of people in the industry that were fine with it. I believe even ExxonMobil was like, yeah, clean power plant is fine. Um, it would have reduced pollution and reduced carbon levels. What's wrong with that? If the industry is mostly okay with that, then why walk it back? It's because Obama, he's playing politics with the climate. But again, Trump eh, doesn't care. He doesn't give a shit about the planet. A lot of the climate deniers don't give a shit about the planet. They end up working for some of the donors. And a lot of the donors say we don't care for last in the world uh, for our backwards energy policies as long as we continue to make our money. We're the only nation left on earth that has a majority uh, of the governing political party that are filled with climate deniers, where the president himself is a climate denier. Uh, despite all the other countries and a majority of the world's scientists that happen to be in consensus that this is a major problem. America used to be a leader in the world, and now we've given that up with President Trump. Oh, and, and it's because, of course, we've now proven, and this was true before President Trump, uh, and it's been true for a very long time, but especially now, it's especially noticeable under Republican rule, that our country is 100% controlled by corporate interests. And it's for that reason alone that we need to get the money out and to end the corruption so we can actually do something and for God's sakes, save mankind. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. 
And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.